Hi all, this is the third of the games that David Grosvenor sent me. Uh, yeah, David Grosvenor, not <laughs> David Grosvenor. <laughs> Sorry about that. So anyway, laser against Leela ID 499. Uh, so let's see this game. D4 from laser, knight f6, c4, g6. So Leela is playing the king's engine. And this is a really annoying solid variation, which I find a lot of difficulty with. Uh, to get any kind of direct attacking chess from this position with black. It usually favours the positional players that want to control the counterplay and have a very very safe king usually. Uh, white castled, now we see c5. Knight c3, knight c6, and white plays the kind of... I would, I would regard this as really quite annoying if, if I had to play against this d-takes. It seems always, when I play this, white gets a small nagging edge. So taking here, taking the fun out of the position potentially. But um, the queens are left on the board with bishop f4 for a moment. Knight h5. Uh, white could have taken the queens off to be really super dull. And this should be just an even position. If we look at this position, knight a5 to try and trade off the bishop there. This should be an even position. So it's not that problematic for black. So uh, we see actually... The move bishop e uh, bishop dropping back to e3 b6 so this looks initially a bit scary because of this diagonal but there's no harm that can be uh, done here at the moment it seems uh, technically so white plays queen a4 uh, now let's see bishop b7 rook fd1 Queen c8, rook a c1, and now here you might think as an attacking player, oh dear, you don't really want to create weaknesses. But this next move might actually be justifiable uh, to most of White's responses to get actually a decent attacking prospect, an attacking prospect out of this position. So this is kind of Botvinnik style, super solid positional chess, but guess what, Black? Leela plays, dares to play, outrageously plays in this position. If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, this is a real rule breaking move. The red alerts probably go up in your mind because isn't this diagonal weakened? Isn't there a knight g5 and bishop d5 check? Uh, very committal. What could be the possible gains of playing f5? Well, clearly f4. And dark squares in general could be targets after that, actually, intuitively. So, but black might have to pay, pay, pay the piper here. Knight g5 is testing the whole thing. F pawn is usually a bit dodgy to, to move. So it's testing the whole thing. Apparently, knight d5 might be more accurate, by the way. Offering the b2 pawn dynamically, like this. But even so, this position, bang, queen takes c6 with this idea. Uh, this is just very, very complicated variations, uh, which which go wild but end up in Black's uh, favor, having a small edge. So, but apparently, knight d5 might be preferable to what was played, which is knight g5. So, this is a real test. This f5. Leela goes for it. F4. We have bishop takes f4. Knight takes f4. G takes. Rook takes f4. Now, isn't this diagonal sensitive? Bishop d5 check is played. We have king h8. And actually, actually, it's not so clear cut. Knight f7 check. Laser plays bishop e6. If we have a look at knight f7 check here, some magic happens in this position on the dark squares. Bear in mind, black's got the dark square bishop without a counterpart. So black could sack the exchange, play queen g4 check, and it's really dangerous for white here. I'll give you an example, king f1, knight d4. Look at g2, coordination on g2. Say bishop d5 to, to try and defend g2. The attack rages on a bit here, check, takes, and this is actually dangerous, white might have to sack the exchange. Because something like rook d3, there's bishop h6 cutting the escape square. And black's got a really vicious uh, attacking position, much a, a winning position out of that. 
So this is really dangerous. So let's say here white plays rook takes d4. This is going to be fine for black. This kind of scenario. It's very, very dangerous. There's no queen d4 because queen takes that pinned pawn. This is absolutely excellent for black, this position. Big advantage. So it seems as though uh, tactically this is this is justifiable to sack the exchange. Yeah, uh, let's just review that again just for a moment. In king king h1, which looks a bit dodgy, but queen f4 here, believe it or not, is a key move. It hits the bishop, it takes that box for hitting a bishop with tempo, but supports bishop e5 hitting h2, to which white is not poised to defend h2 in this position. That's a massive justification for the whole f5, f4 concept to break down the dark squares, possessing, possessing the killer dark square bishop without the counterpart. So concretely, h2 is really hard to defend here. Bishop d5, bishop e5. This is just end of game, really, this position. Black's just crashing through. Uh, White's trying to, ha having to avoid getting mated, uh, but just ends up losing a rook. Yeah, it's, it's just totally diabolical. Look at the pressure on the F file, etc. Something like this. Um, Queen H2. So the whole concept of F5, F4, it's, it seems really quite exciting. So actually White played Bishop E6. That might have been better with King H1. Might have been. So for example like this. This variation is uh, is maybe more interesting to white. It's a bit unclear. <laughs> I'll leave it as unclear. So anyway, so bishop e6, queen b8 is played. Here, in this position, similar ideas, h2. h2 is a major, major target in this position, justifying the whole f5 concept. White does play knight f7. So we have very similar ideas now. Queen f4 with tempo on the bishop and bishop e5 to follow. Bishop d5, bishop e5. Yeah, as we saw, this is really dangerous, and it's really dangerous here. Qu qu uh, queen takes h2, rook f8, threatening mate. Rook c2. But now here is like a move, a science fiction move. I can only describe it as a science fiction move. It has seriously vast, deep implications, what is played here. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is going well into potential end games uh, and assessing those as well. This is real depth from Leela, this next move. Can you guess what black plays in this particular position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, I'm really excited by this game, actually. Bishop takes c3. Now, clearly, you can't play this because of queen takes f2. Let's rule that out for a moment. Pun on the highlighting there. Um, so b takes c3. And what's the idea, you think? Beautiful, beautiful move in this position. If I give you five seconds. This is really celebrating peace coordination on a dark square focal point. So it was h2 before, but now it's f2. Knight e5, just offering an entire bishop here to get in this knight g4, threatening horrible things. White plays king e1. Now, there are a lot of variations. Check out the variations uh, link I'll give you in the pinned comments of this video or in the description of the video. And they're nicely indented, by the way. Check out the variations. Really cool stuff here. So king e1 was tried. Rook takes f2. Uh, this was the continuation but let's let's try this rook dd2 give you an example taking queen takes queen g3 precise moves uh will get a winning attack uh and let's let's do do some alternatives here so instead of king e2 rook c1 check this position with e5, believe it or not, not even e6. Because we've got this discovered check now. This is absolutely crushing. Knight takes c3. Forking queen and rook. Queen d3 check. Taking 
knight d1. This is absolutely big advantage for black, clearly. So very, very dangerous position. So king e1 was chosen. Rook takes f2. So Leela is a rook down, but this is a raging attack. But not only that, there's an endgame undertone to this attack, which is very, very different from our brute force chess engines to see the endgame undertone, the bigger the bigger picture. Here, king g7 takes, takes, king d1. Knight takes e3 check, king c1. So black, a rook down, a rook down here is calmly playing, well, queen f1 check. Now, possibilities here, rook d1 was played, but doesn't matter if king b2, Knight takes c4 check. Now king b3 has knight a5 check, winning the bishop with ample compensation for the exchange. Let's just go back there for a moment. Uh, so instead of king b3, let's look at king c2, check. It can be forced, basically, that position. Uh, and on king c1 there, check on f4 and here there's a key move can you guess a rook down and and this is actually winning for black a rook down b5 so if takes then there's knight a3 check so queen b3 queen c7 just a rook down but casually getting some material back now and this is enough to secure black very big compensation for the exchange loads of pawns for the exchange black is actually winning there so all these lines after queen f1 check yeah are really dangerous so white plays rook d1 and this is the magic of this whole thing because this position after knight takes queen takes Lila just goes for the end game <laughs> this is the big contextual punchline. this end game is incredibly difficult for white all these pawns on dark squares away from the bishop and they're not going to be victimized anytime soon unless white chooses to play a6 at some point later but black just plays h5 look at this end game it's it's very very hard to defend this end game now so even though the attack wasn't leading to checkmate this is a wonderful end game bishop c8 probably accelerates to the end uh, uh, sterner resistance would have been bishop c6 here but even so, have a look at this as an example. Endgame sequence. A6 can be played. This is a really strong move found by my Houdini uh, chess engine on researching this position. And it, it just leads to a win, uh, basically, because this, this supports cutting off the bishop on this diagonal. So if the bishop ever takes on A6, this is just super strong because we can cut the bishop from the diagonal and be winning. Big advantage. So this whole endgame is... Uh, basically diabolical so this didn't help bishop c8 check and we have bishop e6 the king's coming over to destroy these pawns uh, pretty soon king g4 e4 this pawn's a real runner has to be stopped now these pawns are eliminated the, the bishop is totally overloaded here the, <laughs> there's no way these guys are stopping all of black's pawns so c4 Bishop f1, b5, king takes, adjudicate as a win for black. It's very easy for black to win this position with those connected past pawns. They're just triumphing over the bishop. Yeah, I, 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 there's certain aspects of this game. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the striking aspect, you're not supposed to be able to attack white's position that easily. It, the Fincetto structure is supposed to be really strong. The whole f4 concept, uh, f5, f4, weakening the whole diagonal looks to be breaking a lot of principles. But the tactical exchange sacrifice leads to dark square play. Black having that dark square bishop without the counterpart leads to weaknesses on h2 and f2. And that entire piece sack to torture f2, playing a rook down, but technically winning in all the variations, it seems, that I've examined. Technically a winning position, a rook down. And when it does transition even you know to a bishop up that end game is just lost for white it seems technically lost so this is this is real sci-fi chess this is absolute chess on a new level 
and it was played on a really quick time limit as well. I hope you got something from it. I'm pretty stunned by this particular game. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.